From your initial assessment of this deal, from the details that we do know of, what, what do you think? Well, no big surprises, really. We have seen the technical default of Greece, although it's now disguised as a voluntary default that we've long been expecting. We've also seen the bank recapitalization that was necessary, and it was always clear that European banks needed more money. And uh, I think in that sense, uh, no big surprises in the deal. And I think um, even the extension of the uh, EFSF, that European Rescue Fund, was expected. And actually, it may be a little bit smaller than we expected, because initially we were talking about maybe two or three trillion euros. Now it's just one and a half billion. And still, it's not going to be enough. You say that it was expected, much of this deal. It still took them about 10 hours of late night meetings to reach this agreement. Uh, you seem to be indicating, though, that they haven't done enough. Well, it actually took more than 10 hours. It took six days because that summit really started on Friday, if you remember. And um, it was an enormous summit, perhaps the world's uh, longest summit in history. And yet, I think they have really neglected some of the core issues because they have only been dealing with debt issues. And that's part of the problem. It's an important part of the problem. Yeah. But there are other problems. There are the problems of competitiveness and productivity in periphery countries like Greece, and they haven't really dealt with them. So is this enough to stop this uh, crisis continuing? Because we've seen a lot of turmoil on the markets, a lot of question marks over countries like Greece and Italy, for example. Greek's Prime Minister today says it'll be a new era for his country as a result of this deal. Do you think that it's enough to stop any sort of talk now about a possible global recession? Well, not quite a new era for Greece if you look at the fine print, because even under this plan announced today, Greece would still have 120% debt to GDP in 2020. So that's not quite debt free. So they may have a 50% uh, default or 50% haircut, but still Greece's problems remain. They are still a heavily indebted country. They are still a country that doesn't have a competitive economy. And I think the problem isn't solved. Initial reactions after these summits, and we've been there before, I think this is now the 14th summit. Um, they are always euphoric. They're always celebrating mm -hmm. that now this time they finally cracked the nut and solved all of Euro's problems. And then it takes markets two or three days to look at the fine print, look at the detail and figure out that actually they haven't really tackled the big issues. Are you expecting a positive reaction though when European markets open in a few hours? Yes, of course. I mean, that's what they always do. And we have in, seen um, some euphoric reaction already on Asian markets. Mm -hmm. And yet, I think next week when the experts have a look at the detail of that deal, they will find out that the capital is not there and that European politicians actually have a lot more uh, questions to answer. There had also been a big question mark over the future of the single European currency itself. Is this deal enough to perhaps stop a little bit of chatter about whether the Eurozone um, may break up? No, I don't think so actually, because again, uh, the problems remain. Greece is still an uncompetitive economy. It has no chance of recovering if it stays within the Eurozone. So I think in the long term, they will have to break that final taboo as well, that a country may actually depart from the Eurozone. If you actually think back about one and a half years, everybody said there can't be any kind of haircut, any kind of default within the Eurozone. And yet, that's exactly what we're having now. And in the same way, I think they're going to break that final taboo as well. So if it's your prediction that we're going to see this cycle of uh, euphoria and then renewed despair, what do you want these European leaders to do next? What should they do next if, they're, if, the, if you're saying that they shouldn't rest on their laurels after this meeting? Well, what they do have to do now is they have to finally acknowledge that this monetary union doesn't work for the whole continent. The countries are simply too different. And you cannot combine industrial heavyweights like, like Germany, France and Italy with periphery countries like Greece and Portugal. The countries are too different. You can't unite them under one monetary policy. And in the end, you have to split up the Eurozone. All right, Oliver Markhart, which thank you very much for coming in once again. Thank you.